Hello everyone. So today in this video we will talk about history of Java programming language like how it was started and what is the story behind it. So let's get started. So this story start from 1991. So in 1991 uh, there is one company named Sun Microsystem as you all know that who are using the Java programming language. So they very good know about the Sun Microsystem. So in 1991 Sun Microsystem had a requirement to prepare a new programming language in order to prepare software for simple electronic consumer devices like uh, cable tv switch boxes or remote controller like that so what sun microsystem did at that time they prepared a 30 member team which was led by james gosling and patrick northern and at that time the project which they have started so na they named for that project was green and also they said it should have three factors so what are those three factors so they said the programming language which we are going to develop should be simple programming language now what does it mean like say what is simple programming language so we will talk about it in some time the second factor was it should be tight coded programming language and the third factor was it should be architecture neutral programming language now let's come to the point of simple programming language so what does it mean with a simple programming language so the definition of simple programming language is that the programming language which take less memory consumption and take less execution time to execute the program and take less power consumption then then that programming language is called simple programming language now this is the definition but what does it mean and what are those points which we have discussed so what is the meaning of that point so the first point was it should take less execution time now what is the meaning of less execution time so the programming language which take less execution time to execute its complete program that means suppose you are watching tv and in the tv you wanted to change the channel so at that time when you press uh, buttons in the remote controller like uh, you wanted to change the channel to 804 so what you have done you just press the 804 button in your remote and what you have seen at that time you saw that the remote controller is taking a lot of time around two to three minutes to change the channel so do you really think that you need that kind of software which take a lot of time to execute a simple step no right so this is exactly means when you press the button 804 it immediately change the channel that means the execution time of the program is very less so this is what they want in their programming language now what is the advantages if they will have that less execution time feature in their programming language so the advantage is the if the programming language is having that feature then definitely the performance of the application should be good so to improve the performance we need that particular feature now the second thing is what they want is it should take less memory consumption now what does it mean with the less memory consumption so suppose you went to a shop where computer and desktop were sale so you ask the shopkeeper that you want 4 gb of ram 1 tb hard disk and intel core i3 i5 like that processor and can you give me the quotation for all those specification which i have told you so what uh, shopkeeper did he calculate all those things and uh, he give you the estimation cost of the, the system is uh, around 16000 so what you thought at that time like you wanted to execute some applications which take a lot of memory so instead of taking 4 gb of ram why don't i take 8 gb of ram so you ask you ask again to the shopkeeper that can you please extend the ram from 4 gb to 8 gb so he said okay and then again he calculate all those things and he increased the ram cost and then he said that the, now the cost of your system is become from 16000 to 20000 that means now i will have to pay 4000 extra to to get the 8 gb of ram and to execute those software which take a lot of memory so sun microsystem want that we we don't want like our customer will pay a lot of money to execute our program so what they have done they want that the programming language which we are going to prepare it should take less memory to execute the program now what is the benefit of that so as you understand with that example that if the programming language will take less memory then definitely the cost of the end product should be decreased so the system which we are going to purchase right now it is 20 thousand but you can take 4 gb of ram why because the because the programming language is now taking very less memory and the application which you are going to develop with that programming language will also take less memory consumption so definitely your end product cost will be decreased and it should now become again 16,000. so it is the benefit of the less memory consumption feature well now let's come to the third feature which come inside the simple programming language which is less power consumption now what is the meaning of less power consumption so as we see that we have a system to go execute a 
our program right without system we cannot uh, execute our program so what are the things which come inside the system it is definitely hardware right in which we will execute our program we will execute our programming language right so if our programming language or our software is taking a lot of power means directly we can say that it is taking a lot of resources and then resources is taking a lot of power then definitely your maintenance cost of the system will increase why because in some time your system will be big so if the if your system will be big then you will have to maintain the system so that it can execute your software or your program correctly right so if the programming language will take less power consumption means it will take less resources so that the resources will consume less power then the advantage is that your system maintenance cost will be reduced and it will become negligible so this is the benefit of less power consumption so this is all about the simple programming language so what we have discussed about the simple programming language is that the programming language which take mem less memory consumption which take less execution time and which take less power consumption so then that programming language is called simple programming language now let's come to the second factor which they want in their programming language so the second factor was it should be tight coded programming language now what is the meaning of tight coded as we know that if we wanted to implement a simple stack in C programming language then what we will have to do as we know that in a stack there are three operations majorly we do first one is the push which insert the element inside the stack second one is the pop which return the element and delete the element from the stack and the third one is the peak which exactly return the element but do not delete the element from the stack so if I wanted to perform push operation then I will have to write 20 line of code in C programming language similarly if I wanted to perform push operation at that time also I, I will have to write 20 line of code and so the same I will have to do for peak operation so if I total all those lines then I will have to write 60 line of code to implement a stack in C programming language but in Java as you know that there is a predefined class which is a stack so what I have to do at that time I just have to write a stack as is equals to new stack means I just have to create a object of a stack and directly I can do as dot push so I can insert the element directly I can do as dot pop so I can return and delete the element from the stack and directly I can do as dot p so I can get the element directly so this is the benefit so the programming language which gives you the flexibility to write less line of code and execute the same program then that programming language is called tight coded <coughs> now let's come to the third factor so the third factor was architecture neutral programming language so what does it mean with the architecture neutral programming language so the programming language which should not be bounded with any particular hardware system and it must be available to all the hardware system means if you wanted to run your application with one hardware system and to another hardware system and if you are preparing an application and which you wanted to run in one system then another system in all over the system where java is there then the program should execute it should not give any execution error then that programming language is called architecture neutral programming language so these are the three factors which exactly sun microsystem want in their programming language now so this is all the paperwork which was done by the sun microsystem team now in the same 1991 there were one programming language was pascal and the inventor of uh, pascal programming language was nicholas but so nicholas word understood the requirement of sun microsystem so he offered to give the solution in the form of virtual machine but that solution is in the pascal programming language and as we know that the pascal programming language is procedure oriented programming language but the requirement of sun microsystem was they want the solution in object orientation not in the procedure orientation so they rejected the idea of pascal programming language and they said to james gosling that to start the project and prepared the new programming language so the exactly 30 member team start preparing the new programming language and they took around two years to prepare that programming language so in the december 1992 the complete programming language was prepared so they have done with their work now it's time to name the programming language so as we know that the pro project is led by the james gosling so so james gosling was in their cabin at that time and he thought about what would be the name we will name to our new programming language so there is one tree which he always see in the window of his cabinet and the name of the tree was oak so he offered the name oak to sun microsystem sun microsystem replied that as you know we have already invented oak programming language and if we again name our new programming language to oak then people will thought like it is the updated version or the newer version of oak, oak programming language so sun microsystem don't want people to talk like that so they rejected that name now again team start thinking about the name so while working the whole team of green project always went for coffee in sun microsystem cafeteria 
and the coffee which they had the name of that coffee was java so suddenly there is one click happen in the mind of the team members and they thought like why don't we name our new programming language is java so they again offer the name java to sun microsystem for the new programming language and at that time sun microsystem thought about that and they accepted the offer to named our new programming language is java so now each and everything was done so they have programming language now it's time to prepare the product so they have prepared their first first product and the name of that product was star 7 which is actually a remote controller so now the remote controller is prepared and then and then they introduce the remote controller into the market so when they introduce the remote controller into the market so this was introduced in 1993 in the market so in the whole 1993 and the half of 1994 they said that nobody was interested to buy their new remote controller so the first product which actually java introduced into the market was completely failure product even they wait for one and half year but still nobody was interested to buy that product and at the same time in the half of 1994 there is one boom happen of www as part of the internet browser so there is one student the name of the student was mark anderson so he was the undergraduate student of netscape university which is in chicago so at that time he developed a browser and the name of that browser was mosaic so he, he introduced that browser into the market and people were interested and to use that browser and they were keep liking that browser so java people thought about that why don't we prepare a new browser in our programming language and introduce it to the market so again sun microsystem gives the responsibility to prepare the new java browser to janathan pain and patrick nothan they have already decided the browser which we will develop we will name that browser is hot java browser so the team start working so they took nearly around 1 and 1/2 year to prepare the new hot java browser and then they introduce into the market and people will start liking that browser and using that browser but the main facility and the main thing which was in that browser is most likely by the people is applet so the applet was introduced in java and people then start thinking about the applet like because the hot java browser is completely based on the applet and it was written in java programming language so people were start thinking about applet and when they thought about applet so then they got to know that the applet is written in java programming language and it is the part of java programming language so they start thinking about the java programming language so now sun microsystem thought that why don't we introduce our java programming language as a open source into the market so they decided the date that the date was january 23 1996 so in january 23 1996 they introduce a jdk 1.0 version into the market and then people start using the java programming language and the one more interesting thing is that the jdk 1.0 version which they introduced in the market is having only 30% of java was there it is exactly the introduction part means it is the introduction language only which they have introduced into the market but when they release the jdk 1.0 version it will have some other features and then after they introduce jdk 1.2 version in december 8 1998 so in the jdk 1.2 version it is completely unbelievable kind of version which have the 70% of java like uh, it is having strict fp it is having swing corba collection framework a lot of things they have introduced in the java 1.2 and that was exactly 70% of java which even we are using nowadays also that was introduced in jdk 1.2 version and then after they will introduce their another versions like jdk 1.4 in february 6 2002 like that they introduce uh, again and again number of versions and then after they introduce jdk standard edition 8 which was introduced in march 18 2014 so this is all about the history of java but one more thing which you should know about the history of java is that from jdk 1.0 uh, up to jdk 1.6 25th update or we can say the 24th update java was owned by sun microsystem and after that java 1.6 update 25th or we can say the 26th java was owned by oracle corporation so this is all about the history of java i know the length of the video is got increased because lot of things we have discussed in this history video so i hope you guys like this video so if you like this video please do subscribe our channel and thanks for watching this video have a good day